All right, so I'll be demoing sculpting a human head for the project, creating a little figure. These are about eight to 10 inches tall. This one's probably about eight inches tall. So um, the heads can't be too big. Ooh, he's falling over. We'll set him down. Um, so it it's hard to show just in the classroom. So I'm gonna start with a small ball of clay and I, it's actually bigger than I need to be. If you look at the size the typical head is for the project, it ends up being a little bigger because I'm going to start with extra. And I want to first get it all put together so that I don't have any wrinkles or inconsistencies in the clay. And then I start to just shape the head. And I'm thinking of it as a kind of like a upside down egg shape that and I'm going to pull down, and I tend to make a longer neck so that as I create it, see this one, he's pretty stuck now, I can stick it further down inside the figure, and then I have more room and more area to score and slip it into place. So I start to pull down on the clay to create the neck, and that kind of smooths the clay out, gets rid of anything, and I can bring in a chin and then I start to see that egg shape forming because really your neck is kind of like almost like a, a trunk or a stem that fits inside your your collarbones so something like that got the lobe in the back the chin sticking out, the neck coming down. It also gives me a place to grab onto it while I'm sculpting. And then I remember the proportions of the human face, how it fits on the head. We tend to want to put the eyes too high. And then in the end, it doesn't make sense. But if you look at, the eyes really tend to be, by the time you get the hairline in, the forehead, they're almost halfway down the head. So I'm gonna make an eye line as to where that's going to go. And then a center line, so I know I make the face symmetrical, provided I make the center line in the center. And then about halfway from the eye line to the chin, I'm going to add a nose and a mouth. So I just get some guidelines put in there to start so I know where everything's going to go. And next, I want it to be as sculptural as I can make it. So I'm going to refine that chin a little bit. These are wood sculpting tools. They work perfect because they tend to push the clay more than actually scrape it away. And I'm sculpting. So a wood sculpting tool makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See the correlation? There you go. And then I'm going to use the other side. I like these in particular. I'm going to get a little clay off of there um, because they're just the right size for carving out little eye sockets and things. And I don't want to get dry pieces stuck to it, so I'll get rid of those. And these cleanup tools are nice too. I call it the pointy spoon because it looks like a spoon. It comes to a point. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to push in where I put the eyes and make eye sockets. So these are not the eyes themselves, and they look kind of alien when you start. But by doing that, I can start to push clay around and get actual sculptural space. And the more I think about the structure of what's underneath the skin, the more accurate my person's going to be. And you can play with size. If you want them to look surprised, make the eyeball a little bigger. It's a pretty giant eyeball right there. And this is the reason why we keep the figures for the class about 8-10 inches, because if you go any less than this, make it a little more oval, these details get super tiny. We'll do a couple different eyes. A surprise face, a not so surprise face. Now you can score and slip that in, or you can create like a little tiny slab that's going to be my eyelids. And this is one way to do it. There are many. I use this to cut top of an eyelid. Let's get that one out for now. And I'm going 
to clear that edge. So it almost comes to a little point. And I'm going to fix this edge first because I don't want to mess with it once it's on there and see how it'll fit. That's pretty good. I'm also going to come in here and create the pupil. Ah! Poke him in the eye! No! Ow! Ow! Sorry, it's all better now. Because it's easier to do that now than later. And then I can do a lot of different expression depending on how I put the eyelid on. If I put it here, across there, they start to look drowsy. I can put it up higher, make them look more awake. I can curve it a little bit, push that down, and then I'm going to use this so I can get nicer edges. The other end of my wood tool to push that in and sculpt it. And then I can come back with either the same end or this one. Maybe I'll give it a little fold to the eye. It's looking a little bit drowsy still. Typically the top eyelid will rest over the iris a little bit, but not completely. And you can also get a lot of expression with eyebrows. So if I want this, to person, this person to look, I don't know, angry, I can angle the eyebrows coming down. So they're kind of like, Arr. or maybe I arch them. That's pretty high on the head. And I want to think about the direction of the eyebrows that they'll go. And I could do the same little at the bottom too. I could add a little lid if I wanted, or I can just sort of push the clay around that's in there. That's another thing that's nice about the wood tools is that it's easier to push the clay around with them. Now I'm going to take a tiny piece. If I had to make my nose a shape, I'd make it a cone, or a form, I should say. So I'm going to make a tiny cone. Place it on there. And again, that's pretty small to score and slip. It's kind of a pain. I'm going to get rid of my guidelines now. And loot this in. And again, I could make it bigger. I could make it smaller. Depending on how I want. Wow, that eye still looks really drowsy. And sculpt this. Push it all in so I know it's really on there. I don't want to get any air trapped underneath. That's a pretty tiny nose. Let's not be an old person. People's noses tend to be larger since your cartilage never stops growing your whole life. So if you want to make someone look older, make their nose bigger. There you go. Add some little outer nostrils. Oh, I don't have a needle tool. It's interesting. Maybe I come in, add some, pick his nose a little. Get the boogers out of there. Actually, that works better. Looks more like a nose. Because, you know, we don't have pig nostrils. And then maybe I'll put the little crevice in there. And once we get to, I like these for around the, the cleanup tools or the pointy spoon, for around the mouth because it's so subtle how much it comes out that it helps to just push clay around. So I'm going to push a little bit up and maybe that's enough. Maybe I want to add a little bit of a top lip so I push some clay in that way. And then just kind of even all that out, get a little clay on the end. Maybe I'll put a little crease in there. This person's looking somewhat tired and serious right now. I just jabbed the lip. i got to fix that. But I can use the back of this to smooth this out. Whoops, a little low, actually. Maybe I push it in a little. Maybe I want them smiling a little more. I'm going to push the corners of the mouth up. Fix the lip on that side. And a little bit of 
that cheekbone. That eye is bothering me. It's just very unhappy. Let's see if I can give it a little more. Oop. Lift. That's a little better. Maybe that'll bring the smile up. But I can play and I can erase and I can kind of move. As long as I get that clean. Whoop. That's not what I wanted. This is a little thick, this line. some of this away so the lips can stick out just a little more. I can come in and put a little bit of a line here. Oop. And just keep pushing things away and moving it around to get some different effects. Maybe this one's really surprised, this eye over here. So I don't even need an eyelid. I can do eyebrow and get different looks that way. So I can play, add some more things, maybe add a piece for hair, add some edges so it comes in, add some grooves if I want wrinkles in the forehead, furrowed brow. This person is not looking happy. Grr. Not happy with you. I don't know. Keep playing. There you go. Thanks.